finally, dear students, we have finally reached the point where we can define and discuss these indices, these averages, these market uh, statistics that we've been using since the beginning of the semester. We've been talking about the Standard & Poor's 500 and the Dow Jones Industrial Average. But what are they? Well, it turns out they're just lists. And finally, we're going to define them, we're going to review them, and we're going to show you the ones that I believe you need to know by name and recognize, realizing that there are dozens and dozens and dozens and they make up new ones every darn day. Slide 48. Market average, market indices. How can we say that stocks have returned approximately 10%, actually a little bit more, over the past 70 years? Because, you know, there's a lot of stocks out there, folks, and not all of them have done 10 11%. The industry uses market averages and indexes. Another term for these are benchmarks, standards, whatever, whatever rings your chimes. They are used to measure the general behavior of the securities prices, in this case stocks, but there are also indices for, for bonds and other investments by reflecting either the average price behavior, that's a market average, or the relational price behavior, that's a market index, of representative groups of securities, in our case this, semester, this, uh, this chapter, stocks, at any given point in time. Now, <clears throat> why are there two different ones? Well, there's a, a bit of history going on, but don't worry about it. The differences between a market average and a market index are subtle, and most people don't even know there are differences. The book is going to try to explain to you how the, the averages are computed and the indices are computed. And you know what? You don't care. All right? <laughs> we'll tell you what's the most important thing about averages and indices. And that's all you need to know. You cannot help but hear about these every day in the news. The Dow went down. The NASDAQ went up. What? What are they? I don't, most people have no idea. And what's the point? I don't know. It, 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 well, I do, but you will. But most people don't. They just hear the Dow went up. Oh, that must be good. The Dow went down. Oh, that must be bad. Hmm. Slide 49. The difference between a market average and a market index is that an average just uses the share price. Now, the 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 reason this 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 started is because that's what they had back in 1896 when the Dow was started. But very quickly they realized, you know what, that's not going to work when we have a large list of stocks because some stocks are very large, some stocks are very small. You're comparing apples to oranges. You need to have some way to uh, compare the two so that the large companies have more weight. Uh, that's an index, a market-weighted calculation. We need to understand the capitalization. And we're going, to, we're going to define this later on, folks, so relax. But in other words, how big is the company? The larger the market share, the more influence the security will have in the index. And this is mostly all the averages and indexes that you hear about. They're mostly all indexes. The Dow Jones Industrial Average is the major average. And the reason is because it's only 30 stocks. Standard & Poor's, 500 stocks. So they have to use this market-weighted calculation. And market-weighted calculations were generally regarded as a better measure until the bubble of the late 1990s. And back in Chapter 4, remember we said that one stock was responsible for 10% of the, um, the uh, return on this, the Standard & Poor's 500 in 1998. So that... There's 500 stocks, and one stock represents 10%. See, that's the problem. As the company gets larger, it has a bigger influence. Yes, this is, you know, nothing's perfect. Nothing is perfect. Certainly not indexes or averages. So, so again, if you didn't really catch the subtle difference between an average and an index, don't worry about it, because there's 99.99% .99 of the time you don't care. Slide 50. Here it is, folks. Here's the granddaddy of them all. 1896, Charles Dow of Dow Jones Industry, and Dow Jones, uh, uh, Dow Jones, that's the name of the company that owns the Wall Street Journal, that was bought by Rupert Murdoch of Fox News. 
and now it's basically another extension of Fox News, and they weren't interested in the Dow Jones Industrial Average. They seem, but you can't get a straight answer out of these people. It seems that now Standard & Poor's is actually running the Dow Jones Industrial Average, DJIA is what you'll see it abbreviated as. So figure that one out. And this is the most popular. This is the most uh, widely reported, and it is one of the worst averages. Why? Because it's only 30 companies. It started out as 12, and one of them is still in the index. Can you guess which one? We'll see. The Dow Jones Industrial Average is a stock market average made up of 30 high-quality stocks selected for total market value and public broad public ownership and believed to reflect overall market activity. Well, it doesn't. It's only 30 companies, and uh, it, it, it's not the best measure, but hey, it's what everyone uses, so we're stuck with it. Um, it's the most famous, and you'll see it just called the Dow, or the Dow Average, or the DJIA. It changes from time to time as companies and industries involve, and now it has more non-industrial stocks than industrial stocks. So they should just change the name. They should get rid of the industrial and just call it the Dow Jones average, but they don't listen to me. Uh, slide number 51. Here they are, folks. Here are the 30 stocks in the Dow Jones industrial average as of um, this uh, uh, recording. And um, you know most of these companies, right? Is McDonald's an industrial company or Disney? Industrial Light and Magic. That was the company that was started by the guy who started Star Wars. Uh, yeah, no, these are not industrial companies, but General Electric. Uh, oh, General Electric. Yeah, that's the company that was one of the first companies to start in 1896 in the Dow Jones Industrial Average, and it's the only company that's left out of those 12 companies. And then uh, you might have heard of United Technologies. Maybe not, but that's a uh, that's a that's an industrial company. That's a, they make uh, Otis elevators and Pratt and Whitney jet engines and and uh, Sikorsky helicopters. Oh, I think they're spinning off Sikorsky. I think I'm not sure. But are the rest well Boeing? You know Caterpillar. Yeah, those are industrial companies. Boeing makes planes. Caterpillar makes <coughs> earth moving equipment. But the rest of them, no. Got a couple of drug companies here: Merck and Pfizer. Nike makes shoes. American Excuse is a financial company, so is Squeezia, Verizon, and Apple. <laughs> I'm sorry, Verizon and Apple, cell phones, where's AT&T? Oh, they took AT&T they took AT &T out to put Apple in, yeah, but they left Verizon, figured that one out. Then you got a couple of uh, ExxonMobil and, and Chevron are oil companies, and where's the, uh, there used to be a chemical company, but not anymore. Cisco makes internet equipment, IBM, Intel, technology, Home Cheapo. Johnson & Johnson is a, uh, you know, they make baby powder and Band-Aids and Q-tips and thousands of other medical products. Goldman Sachs is, a, is another financial company. So, so, of course, Walmart. And so here they are, folks. Here are the 30 stocks in the Dow Jones Industrial Average. So when you hear that the Dow went up 100 points, whatever that is, the average of these 30 companies' price went up that much. One company might have gone up really a lot, and that would have that would have affected the Dow pretty strongly. But they are measuring the entire stock market by 30 stocks. Does that make any sense? In my humble opinion, no. And there is a uh, exercise on the website I want you to do 83 years ago, right? And uh, so you want to do that. It's also, if you're following along in Canvas, you'll see it. And you're going to decide which one you want and go back 83 years and see how well you had done and then see how well the rest of them done. Realizing that Apple, Microsoft, they weren't around 83 years ago, Walmart, so they took somebody out to put them in. Right, they change it from time to time. And <clears throat> we will discuss the markets as a whole, as we've already done, but this one is not a good measure of the overall market, but it's what we're stuck with. Slide number 52. Dow Jones also has other averages and indexes. And for many years, and still people do look at the transport average. 20 railroad, airline, freight companies. Again, it's an average because there's only 20 companies. You can get away with it. When you get more companies, you need to use an index. Because what they do is they say, look, you know, 
before the stuff gets sold, it's got to get to where it needs to go to be built and then to where it needs to be sold. So they look at the transport average as a, a proxy, meaning a substitute or a, uh, as, a, as an indicator of what's going to happen six months here from now, nine months from now. And then the utilities, well, utilities are pretty boring, so that's not a big deal. It's only 15. You put all three together, the industrial average, the transportation average, and the utilities, and you get the composite average. Nobody I know follows that. But the next two are very important. And why? Because of mutual funds. The Dow Jones U.S. Total Stock Market Index, it used to be called the Wilshire 5000 until Dow Jones kicked them to the side. Uh, Wilshire is a company that made their own index called the Wilshire 5000, which was 5,000 large, medium, mid-size, uh, mid-cap, they're called, and small companies. And then they made the Wilshire 4500, which is now called the Dow Jones U.S. Completion Total Stock Market Index. <laughs> Who makes these names up? I don't know, but they're getting paid more than I do. I do. And what they did, what Wilshire did is they took the 5,000 companies, the top 5,000 companies, you know, that means a lot of small companies because not all 5,000 are big, and they lopped off the top 500 stocks. That's, that's the S&P 500. They took off the top 500 stocks. So in other words, you're looking at medium-sized companies and small companies. And this should look familiar. Does it look familiar? That's the S fund in the thrift savings plan. It used to be called the Wilshire 4500, which I think is a better name, but now it's called the Dow Jones U.S. Completion Total Stock Market Index. <clears throat> Sometimes called the extended market. I don't know. But, uh, but remember that one? That's one of the ones. These two. I want you to remember these two. I'll, we'll, get, we'll get to that in a bit. Okay. Dow Jones Internet Index. The reason I threw that in there is because it's an example of how wrong people can be. The Dow Jones Internet Index came out at the height of the tech bubble in the late 90s. It then proceeded to lose 96% of its value. So much for indexed investing. Anyway, slide number 53. Now here's, folks, this is the most important index out there, but it doesn't, it gets second or sometimes third billing to the Dow and the NASDAQ. So the Standard & Poor's 500, composite index. 500 stocks chosen for market size, liquidity, and industry group representation. And it is a market weight value weighted index. Yes, what does that mean? That means, as we've said, the larger the company, the more influence, the more effect the uh, price change has on the index. And traditionally, these were the largest 500 companies based in the United States. Well, now it contain, contains a few foreign stocks. Why is that? Because some companies have gone global and uh, are buying each other up. And so we have some companies that are very large American companies that were bought by foreign companies. For example, 1996, was it? 1997, 1996. Um, Daimler-Benz, Mercedes-Benz, Javor. They bought Chrysler, so it became Daimler Chrysler. And and how do you pronounce? How did you? It doesn't. They don't own it anymore. How did you pronounce Daimler Chrysler in Germany? Daimler. The Chrysler was silent. It was a joke. And then ten years later, they sold them. <laughs> they didn't. They decided it wasn't working out. So we got to get divorced. And they sold them. So, but when they bought them, S and P said, "Wait a minute. You just bought one of our largest companies in the United States. Okay, we'll let." Daimler Chrysler in the Standard & Poor's 500. Okay, so some of the companies, because of the, of the fact that BP, for example, British Petroleum, owns Arco and Amico. So they allow some companies that are foreign to be in the S&P 500. But those are just a few. As we saw, it has used by many, 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 many index funds. How low can you go? They keep uh, lowering the, uh, some of them, Vanguard, Fidelity. Um, some of them raise them, Wells Fargo, Nationwide so that they can stick you in your 401k with high fees. And because of it is market weighted, that was generally, as we said, considered a better measure, but nothing's perfect. It was affected by the tech bubble of the late 1990s in a bizarre manner. As we said, the market values of a small percentage of technology companies, we discussed this back in Chapter 4, if you remember, were inflated to extremes. This skewed the index even more toward those companies. 
And what do the index fund managers have to do? Right, they have to buy more because now Apple and Microsoft and Dell and, and, and Oracle and all the Intel, the tech companies were worth more. So they have more influence on the, the index and they're worth more in the index. So now the mutual fund manager has to buy them. They can't say, you know what, this is getting out of hand. They have to do it. And then, of course, when the opposite happens, when the, more, when the stock starts falling, they have to sell. They can't say, you know what, this is a great bargain. And that's why I'm not a big fan of index funds. And people will say, well, index funds are the only way to invest. I say, We're wrong. There are many ways to invest. Plus, they're not perfect. Nothing, nothing that we invest in, folks. Nothing is perfect. There was one person perfect 2,000 years ago, and they hung him on a tree. So uh, They hung him to a cross. So remember, it just doesn't work that way, all right? Nothing is perfect. No investment is fail-safe. And consequently, and this was, this was, you know, the, the S&P realized what was going on. They, they're, they're, their index, they were worried about it too. In 1998, as we said, Microsoft, one company in 500 was responsible for 10% of the gain. So obviously, you know, nothing's perfect and there are problems with index investing. I'm not trying to say you shouldn't invest in an index fund. That's not what I'm saying. But you have to realize that there are pros, there are advantages, and there are disadvantages. So big, big, big I'm sorry, big, big, big one, the Standard & Poor's 500, in my humble opinion, much better than the Dow, but you're, it, the Dow gets top billing. And then s and Poor's, Standard & Poor's, S&P has dozens and dozens and dozens of other indexes. The Industrial 400, the Mid Cap 400, the Small Cap 600, the, you put the S&P 500, the Mid Cap 400, the Small Cap 600 together, and you get the 1500. And then they have transportation, utilities, financial, global, international, sector indices. Go to their website, Standard & Poor's, and check out the dozens and dozens of indices that they have. But what's the most important one? Standard & Poor's 500. Now, <clears throat> the major uh, um, uh, exchanges and, and, and markets have their own indices. The New York, Standard Com the New York Stock Exchange Index, uh, New York Stock Exchange has their own composite index. Uh, approximately 2,000, not all the stocks listed on the New York Stock Exchange. Amex has their own. Nobody follows it. But here's the, the, um, the one that you see quite a bit, the NASDAQ. And the reason you see the NASDAQ is because that's a proxy, a substitute, a, a symbol, a, an indicator for the tech world. Because most of the companies in the, in the NASDAQ are newer companies as we talked about in a uh, uh, presentation, a couple of presentations ago. And so there are the companies like Apple and Intel and Microsoft that started out small and then became huge, and Google and Facebook and uh, Oracle, but Oracle's no longer on the NASDAQ. They've moved to the New York Stock Exchange. Exactly. So, so there's a, it, it's a, you know, it, it's not all tech companies. Some tech companies are on the Na New York Stock Exchange or other indice, other exchanges. Plus, there are some companies that are just not, not um, uh, technology companies. Starbucks. Starbucks is on the uh, the Nasdaq. Is that a technology company? I don't think so. Costco. Well, I don't know. So. So even though the NASDAQ is mostly tech companies, it's not all tech companies. But you will hear on the news, often the Dow and the NASDAQ, sometimes you hear the S&P. If it were up to me, I'd show the S&P, and then I would show the uh, Wilshire 4500, but it's not up to me. Okay, and then there's the NASDAQ 100, which is non-financial firms, but that's not important. The NASDAQ composite went from 800 in 1995 to 5,000 in, in the year 2000. Yes, it was up and way up. <laughs> How high can it go? And then when everyone was saying, ooh, 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 is it too late to get in? Yes, because then it dropped 80% from Five thousand down to twelve hundred in in October two thousand and two before it started to recover. Ooh, is it too late to get out? Now that's the time you should be buying. And so the Nasdaq is technology laden. Okay, so let's take a few of the a few look at a few of the others. We are reviewing because I already showed you these two, but these are two I want you to remember, folks. So we're gonna we're gonna reiterate these 
and it's on a worksheet that I'll we'll refer to at the very end. Um, the Dow Jones U.S. Total Stock Market Index, which used to be called the Wilshire 5000, which is what I still call it. Mount Standard & Poor's has their own. MSCI, who are they? We'll see those in a slide or two. They have their own, but you don't hear too much about them. And then the extended, the completion stock market, the 4500. I still call it the Wilshire 4500. You take the top 5,000 companies and then lop off the top 500, get rid of the very large companies like the GEs, like the Walmarts and the Googles and the Apples, and you're left with the mid companies and the small companies. So remember those, and on slide 57, we'll take a look at the last few that I want you to remember, and that's the Russell 2000. Now, what's that? Remember we discussed back in Chapter 1, maybe you don't, small companies, and I don't want you to use, to look at small companies because, yes, they've done better, but not all of them have done better. A lot of them have disappeared. Most of them have disappeared. But the Russell 2000 was designed by a company called Frank Russell Associates, and a uh, great name, Frank. And they created the Russell 3000, which is the top 3,000 companies, the Russell 1000, which is the top 1,000, meaning size, market capitalization, which will will define in a future presentation. And they lopped off the first 1,000. And what you're left with is 2,000 companies, one company 1,001 to, to 3,000. You see what happened? So you're left with the 2,000 small companies. So the Russell 2000 is meant to measure small company performance. And you don't normally hear about this one, but it's a good one to watch. Because small companies, are they, they're different, folks. They're very different from the large companies. They're much more risky. They're much more dangerous. I recommend that you stay away from them. Maybe put a little bit of money in small companies. But for the most part, stay away from them. But they are often a very good gauge of what's going on behind the scenes because they're more nimble than large companies. They can react faster, but they also get hammered. When there's a recession, when there's a downturn, they get destroyed. So they're a whole other world to themselves. And I like to watch them, but most people don't. And you don't really need to because you're going to be investing mostly in large companies, right? Globally, based all around the world, that have their roots deep in the economy. Please? Okay, anyway. Now, that's all domestic. So, so far, all we've looked at are domestic uh, uh, indices. What about outside the world? Well, this is an interesting story. A company called Capital, you don't know them as Capital, they're actually the American funds, they were one of the first companies, not the first, but they were one of the first companies, they were, they were others, that started investing outside the United States. And they did not have a, a, um, a, uh, a benchmark for how they're doing outside the United States. You know, they can't really compare it to the S&P 500 because that's all domestic companies. So they started their own index called the IFA. Right? And the world index. The world index and the IFA. They, the world index means everybody. And the IFA, and that's how it's pronounced. Uh, I didn't make it up. E-A-F-E was everybody except the United States. But the problem is, folks, it's a very serious problem. You are creating the measure by which you are measuring yourself. Because they're called the American funds, but they're one of the biggest global investors in the world. And so you're creating your own benchmark to measure yourself. You see where the problem is? It's not a good idea because, first of all, there's a con serious conflict of interest. And even if you're squeaky clean and you, <laughs> you, know, you separate the two between your index and what you, in, in what you invest in, it has the appearance of a conflict of interest. So they sold it to Morgan Stanley. And so it's called Morgan Stanley Capital International, but Morgan Stanley runs it, not, not American funds. And, and it started out with the World Index and the EFA, the uh, Europe, Australia, and the Far East. That's what EFA stands for, Europe, Australia, and the Far East. But the problem with these two, the World and the EFA, although they're great names, is that they never included the developing countries, the developing world countries. So, so they're still based in the developed world. The World Index is United States, Canada, Western Europe, uh, Singapore, um, Japan, Australia, Hong Kong. So the developed markets for years. Uh, and, but, you know, India's gotten bigger and China's gotten bigger and, so, and South uh, Korea's gotten bigger and South 
Africa and Turkey and Eastern Europe and, and, and Latin America, Brazil, Mexico, Peru is doing pretty darn good. So is Argentina lately. So, so instead of adding those to the world index and adding those to the IFA, excluding the United States, they created two new indices. And I want to punch them in the nose, in a nice way, of course, because they have the stupidest names. The MSCI All Country World Index is replacing the World Index. And the MSCI All Country World XUSA Index. XUSA. Well, what the? In other words, outside the United States. <laughs> so these are replacing the World and the EFA Index because the developing markets are becoming more and more important, folks. And, folks, that's where the growth is, folks. These people, hundreds of millions are coming, have already come out, more are coming out of poverty every year. And this is a phenomenal sign for investors because you know what? They got money in their pockets and they want Dan and yogurt and they want Marlboro cigarettes and they want Coca-Cola and they love Disney and they want to have a cell phone. And you see, it's good. That's good. It's good that the rest of the world is playing catch up to us. It's not a bad thing. If you're Colgate, you, you know, you, if you have a couple of children, you maybe have a hard time getting your kid to brush teeth for the first, you know, first time or trying to get them to keep them brushing teeth. Colgate and Crest, they're trying to get people, uh, hundreds of millions of people in India to brush their teeth for the very first time. And once they realize that their teeth aren't going to fall out as fast, <laughs> you understand exactly. These are good signs, folks, for investors. I believe, I believe, we'll see, we'll see. Can't guarantee anything, but I'm, I'm excited. Now, in the face-to-face -face class, we would stop right now and do worksheet number one. Now, you can stop right now and do worksheet number one or do it on your own uh, at a different time. But those are the indexes, eight indexes that I want you to remember. Dow, S&P 500, NASDAQ, uh, Russell 2000, the uh, IFA, which is being replaced by... Uh, uh, the All Country World X USA, the World, which is being replaced by the All Country World Index, the Wilshire 5000, the Wilshire 4500, which are the Dow Jones U.S. Total Stock Market Index and the Dow Jones Completion U.S. Total Stock Market Index. How can you remember that? All you have to do is be able to identify them, okay? I remember the Wilshire 5000, the Wilshire 4500. So is that, a, is that a deal? All right. So either you do it now, stop the presentation, do it now, or wait until afterwards, because we have just a few more slides. Just a few more slides, folks. Because this, this is what you're going to see on the nightly news, on the internet. This Dow started rocketing in the morning, only to fall tremendously during midday, and breathlessly fall into the dire pit of despair. But then by 2 p.m., it came back again, only to end pretty much where it started at the beginning of the day. This is what you're going to see, folks, every day on the news. Because they got to sell eyeballs, right? They have to sell advertising. What's going on here? What's going on here? There's a wonderful book that was written back in the 1950s called How to Lie with Statistics. How to Lie with Statistics. And what are they doing here? They're only showing you a very small part of the Dow Jones Industrial Average. You know, not even what? 30 points worth, 20 point, 25 points worth. If they were to show you the entire index, today's unstable stock market index would look like this. <laughs> today's stable stock market index. Stock market index mania changes to stock market index ennui. You like that word, ennui? It, it means beyond boredom. It's a French word. And are they going to show you this graph on the nightly news? No, folks, because it wouldn't sell any eyeballs. It wouldn't get you excited and, and nervous and, and, and make you want to breathlessly watch the news. Indeed, right? So, so keep a long-term perspective. And if you now turn to slide 60, what can we do here, folks? Well, we can go back and re-examine the volatility that we saw a couple of presentations ago, right? Where we saw the S&P 500 in the year 2017 uh, jump up and then fall down and then jump up and fall down and finally jump up 
And if we show you the entire index from 0 to 12,000, uh, no, I'm sorry, this is 0 to $12,000, not the index, but the, but the entire amount of your portfolio, does it look as scary anymore as it did when we were only showing you the, the, the from, from whatever, 10,000 to 12,000? No, it doesn't. So again, keep a long-term perspective. Realize that, yeah, there's going to be times when the market falls and there's going to be times when the market rises. And, and if we're intellectually and emotionally prepared for it, then it's not the end of the world. I mean, if it is the end of the world, it doesn't matter <laughs> where your money is. And when I've noticed when we show this graph to people, they uh they they get you know, it's almost you can see the relief come in their face and they 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 realize that they really don't have to worry that much about the stock market we invest in the businesses and just enjoy the fruits of what the businesses uh, will give us and at the same time realize that the standard of living around the world is going to increase and we're all going to be better off ha 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 well anyway are you going to see this graph on the nightly news, folks? No, no, no. So go back over. Make sure you know the um, important um, uh, uh, indices, the, uh, from the Dow all the way to the Russell, to the uh, the international and, and glo global uh, indices. And in our next presentation, we will delve now more deeply into more stock characteristics and measurements. Study, study, study. Bring honor and glory to Southwestern College. Be awesome. You are now the investment guru for your friends and families and coworkers, and they are going to be so proud and amazed at you. See ya.